This is going to be a short video, and we're going to focus specifically on heat versus performance with these M2 ship. What I want to know is, if the ship is hot, and if we throw a TAS at it, is it going to run much slower than, for instance, when the ship is cool? So let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. M2 Heat versus Performance. This will be a shorter video relative to what I've done in the past. As always, feel free to pause the graph so you can analyze the result yourself. And what you're about to see is not as in-depth of a testing that I have done before. However, it is something that came up in the normal course of testing and some of you have asked this question, which is why I'm making this video. We're going to be answering two different questions. The first one is, when the M2 ship is running cool versus when it's running hot, are we going to see a performance variation between the two? And secondly, as we configure our machine differently, for example, if we give it more RAM on the system, are we going to see the same type of performance degradation with temperature? With this, we have to take a look at our test system. There are four 13-inch MacBook Pro M2 machines, and the variation between these machines has to do with memory, 8GB, 16, and also 24. As far as SSD go, we have a combination between 256 and also 512. Majority of the machine, though, will have 256 gigabyte SSD. In addition, I will also be including the result from the MacBook Air M2 as well. This is the base model with 8 GPU and also base memory, base SSD. And for comparison result, we want to see how this compares to the M1 computer. So there are two M1s, Mac Mini with 16 gigabyte and also 512GB SSD, and also the M1 MacBook Air base configuration as well, so you can see the specs right on the screen now. The focus on this will be from a pro workflow standpoint, and I'll be using Lightroom Classic to do all the tests. Predominantly, we're going to use Lightroom Classic in the export task, and the reason why is because with the new Lightroom Classic and export tasks is utilizing both CPU, GPU, and memory in the export process, so it really taxes all these components in the system that could also heat up and show any performance variation. For testing method, it's quite simple. There are two ways I've tested this. In my normal course of testing these machines, what I do is bring 1,000 raw files in Nikon D850 into Lightroom Classic, have it render one-to-one -one preview. Normally when it is done and the ship is already running hot, the fan is already kicking on, I would export these files right away. So I recorded these time. In the other method of testing, to test when the ship is running cool, I approach this from the idle temperature, meaning that I would have Lightroom render one-to-one -one preview. Then what I would do is leave the machine in idle for around 20 minutes with nothing else running and pretty much start up the task for exporting again to see the result. And with this, we're using Lightroom Classic, as I mentioned before. And all of these tests are done with the GPU exporting enable on this. So if you're running Lightroom Classic version 11.4 or newer, so on some of these machines, especially the one with 8 gigabytes of memory, GPU exporting is not enabled by default. I'll leave a link to it up here and also in the description below so you can learn how to enable that function so you can maximize the performance of these machines. With this, let's establish a baseline by looking at the M1 machine. So for this, we have one that is a desktop and we have another one that is a laptop machine with passive cooling. Not the best example, but it gives us an idea that based on what we're seeing so far, the M1 is not really showing that much performance variation when it's in the cool state, 20 minute idle, versus when we're just going from task to task in the normal condition. Yes, granted the Mac Mini does have a bigger fan and it's also a desktop, but nonetheless, it gives us an idea for the way how the ship would perform. Same thing with the MacBook Air, there's only about a minute variation between the two, but this starts to paint a picture about the M1 ship. So let's take a look at the result for the M2. And the way I have this sorted right now is based on memory, and we're just gonna focus on that first. So take a look at the base model, for instance. Under cool condition, running it from idle state for 20 minutes, we're looking at an export time of 23 minutes. The moment we go from back to back to back with the exporting under normal condition, we can see that the time increased to around 30 minutes. So that is a rather significant time increase by about seven minutes or so. On the 512 gigabyte model with 8 gigabyte memory, it is pretty much the same story, although the time does reduce a little bit there. But when we take a look, for instance, with the machine with 16 gigabyte, we're still seeing that time variation. The variation, though, does get smaller when we look at, for instance, the 24 gigabyte machine where we're only talking about a minute apart now. So that's rather interesting that if you have a machine with more memory, you may not get affected as much by the thermal performance of a ship. 
Again, this is a very on the surface test. It's not quite as in depth, but these are the results that I've gathered from running multiple trials on these ship and running multiple export trials to really see how the ship is performing. And lastly, when we talk about the MacBook Air M2, it is about a minute difference again. And with that machine, there's no fan on the inside. So obviously it's passive cooling. That is really what we would expect from it. Not that much of a performance gain. When we tabulate this a little bit differently, for instance, by the memory in the machine, we can still see the same thing that the 24 gigabyte is less affected. The 16 gigabyte is still affected by this. So if you order a machine with 24 gigabyte, you may be less affected by the performance decrease when the ship does run hot because you're giving the machine and the app more memory to really finish this task up. Um, so that's kind of the thing there and all the rest of the result you're seeing there. Here is the result comparing with the M1 machine to set up the baseline. You can see that the Mac Mini M1 is not quite as affected by the thermal performance. However, when it comes to these M2 ship, yes, the thermal on the ship, the temperature on the ship itself does definitely degrade the performance of the machine because the ship end up slowing down a little bit even though you have an active fan running in order for it not to run quite as hot and when i'm running these tests i mean the temperature is pretty much all maxed out and the fan is running blasting rather high on these so that's something interesting to note about these tests and the thermal temperature in general anyway i hope that you find this helpful if you have any questions or comments leave them below give us a like subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new and you're not retressed.